We'll talk about what I call the extreme Fibonacci extensions. Okay, these Fibonacci ratios are very, very powerful, and the one that I like is the 261% measure move extension. And here's how it goes from A down to B. The BC range is what you do to extend downwards, and it is 261% times this range here and once you multiply that you subtract that from C and you extend down to here and once you do that this is the zone that it may turn around from now you don't just buy it here automatically you want to see what happens down there and what you see is choppiness and you're still going lower highs lower lows okay but again once it starts to roll over like I showed earlier high lows, high highs, hey, that might be the turnaround. This can also be looked upon as some inverted head and shoulders. But the key is that you go from lower highs, lower lows, to higher lows, higher highs in blue, and then even shallower, up you go. Okay, So and that all happened around this zone, the, the Fibonacci extension extreme zone. Okay, So that's what you, you get in terms of Fibonacci extension. And this is one of my favorite patterns here. Here's another example of March Sugar. This was just uh, recent. Here's that C, the D leg, extending all the way up to 261%. And there's your drop. There are other numbers here. There are other supporting structures there as well. I'm not showcasing those, but I want to showcase what I call the dominant pattern, having hit this 261. Okay, So that's where it, in this case, topped out. You want to look for other clues that it is turning around there on a smaller time interval chart or from other, other patterns, uh, supporting structures, if you will. Okay. Here's a research in motion, a stock. And the thing with this one is you have this going up to a high. Now look at this point C here. This is pretty deep point C right there. Okay. The BC extension up to here is where it is mathematically. Now, the next day it dropped a little bit in preparation for some sort of announcement, earnings announcement on this, on this stock. It is of no surprise that it decides to move downwards. Having moved downwards, what happens here is that it formed yet another pattern here. And here's this BC's extension, 261 over here. And that's ready for a pop. But wait a minute, point C here is a shallow retracement coming down. Like this upward bounce here is very shallow, less than 50%. Of this move here. Now, what does that mean? What does that tell you about this bounce over here? It's not going to be a big bounce because you're buying the low at point D at 261 off of a strong downtrend shown by the, the shallowness of point C. Okay, so you want to put things in perspective before you want to apply these numbers to look for a high or a low. So that's just common sense. Look for trend direction. And look for trend strength first. You can also have double 261s, like here. And silver, this was uh, earlier, last year. This 261 extends down here. Another one inside there extends down here. Double 261s would reinforce a low here for a bounce. And we were in the uptrend already. Okay. This was last year when it was at 17 bucks. So, so all these tools, hopefully, uh, make sense. Okay. And I'll show you some other things here. Here's crude oil. One of my favorite patterns is, in this case, a buy happens when crude oil makes a very deep retracement there, confirms it by going down here, and then not only that, it chops around deep retracement, deep retracement down to my 261. Okay. Now, this initial pattern here is what I'm looking at. That's a very deep retracement. Again, much deeper than 50%. And the BC leg extends downwards right here. And all the other patterns are also choppy, choppy, choppy down to here. Well, guess what? Once it hits that 261, up you go. There's also a supporting structure, I mean, uh, that's very, very deep all the way down here, which makes this a very tremendous buy. But I also want to talk about this pattern going up. 
It's kind of going up, actually shows it hitting a 361. We also use a 361 in certain circumstances, okay? And that certain circumstances is when it blows past the 261 with a lot of power. And this one has a lot of power coming through. But it will catch it, the next extension will catch it, in this case, for a drop. Okay? So you want to look for all these tools here. The 261 is the main one. Now, how do you calculate the 261? Okay, well, if you want to take longhand calculation, you can see how point C is 75.75. Point B is this number over here, and I did some longhand calculations here to actually give you the calculation of this low. Of course, when I use Q charts, I can click and drag and find that low very, very quickly and easily. A lot of good charting services has that capability as well. Q charts is a lot more elegant. I love it. Okay, so that gives you a way to pick that low by simply clicking and dragging. The calculations of the 261 and other Fibonacci ratios are very, very uh, easy to do once you have that. Now, here's one that I did just Thursday last week. Here's my 261 extension down to here, mathematically. Here's another one that ends up at the same place. But the way it got down there was, it didn't go straight. It came down here. It had another deep retracement. In other words, it was chopping its way down. And more specifically, the retracement here is about, what, 60% deep? This one's about 90% deep. So as you get deeper and deeper into this number, that's a buying opportunity. I bought that low at 12.02 and a quarter. That low is actually uh, 12.02 even. This is the E-mini S&P five-minute chart, December contract. And last Thursday was a tremendous buy. I, I got out right about here for about five points. But that showed the slowing down of trend on a five-minute chart, similar to what I showed you on the daily chart earlier in, I believe, crude oil. So these numbers come together, and the nature of how it came down, nice and gentle, weak trend, if you will. Okay, This is deep. This is a shallow, I'm sorry, less than 50%. This is deeper, about 60%, 60%, about 90%. This is simply not going to run away from you to the downside. So once it hits some Fibonacci numbers, in this case two of them, it's done. Now along with extensions, we want to also look at another powerful tool that I've developed or I've, I've noticed. It's called the skewing. Okay. Now point C, we talked about how deep point C is or how shallow it needs to be. Uh, to give you a strong trend or how deep it is to give you a weak trend. But now point C can also be skewed to the left or point C can be skewed so-called to the right. Same retracement percentage in terms of the number of points dropping from B to C as a percentage of the move from A to B. But what's the main difference between what I call a right skew and a left skew? Well, a left skew simply means that it moves up from here to here, and you get a fast drop. If you have a bar chart, it might be maybe one or two bars you're down here already. And the number of bars that it would take to go back up and above point B might be a lot more. If it's twice as many, meaning maybe two bars down and one, two, three, four up, we call that a two to one left skew, okay, two bars down and four up. That means that what point C is, is more towards this way than this way. What this means is it took a lot longer to recover, if you will, on the way up from C than it did to drop from B down to C, left skewing. Now, right skewing is the opposite. The drop here, you may have small bars, short bars, overlapping bars as you make your way down to the C. Uh, maybe one or two bars later, oh, you're above B already. This couldn't wait to go high up and above B fast enough. This is called right skewing. The drop from B down to C, the pullback, is a slow, lazy drop. And then on its way up, it just couldn't wait to go up fast enough. Okay. And the same thing happens if you are in a uh, bearish situation. Okay. 
This is a downtrend with a left skewing point C. And this is a downtrend with a right skewing point C. Now you can also have neutral skewing. Now whether it be skewed left or skewed right, we would want it to be about two to one or more to be significant. If you have something that says on this way up, let's say these, this was not a line chart but a bar chart, it takes eight bars to go up and seven bars to go down, we can call that neutral. This is, you know, this is not really skewed this way or this way. Anyway, a quick way to, to determine whether skew left or skew right is look for point C as a pivot high, drop it straight down here and see if it's closer to B or the actual bar that made it through and, and below point B. Where is it closer to? That will tell you which way it's skewing. Okay. So the skewing is another tool that we have at our disposal. You can eyeball it. You can see it, you know, in two seconds. And I, I encourage you to look for this in your own charts of whichever market you're trading, okay? Because skewing along with retracement is a powerful tool to give you trend strength. Remember point C, right? Point C can be shallow or deep, up or down. Point C can be skewed left or right, okay? Side to side. Up and down is a price issue. This is a time issue because the time it takes to get up to here compared to the time that it takes to get back below there, same distance, which way does it want to run fastest? This way or this way? That's what skewing tells you. Okay.